starting here. I am making banana monkey bread. Oh my goodness, I saw this recipe and I knew I had to use my bananas. I got all these bananas for free. Look at all of these and I've been eating on them. So I'm looking for banana recipes and this is one that I'm sure is gonna be delicious. I mean, bananas aren't defrosted yet. So I'm gonna throw these in the microwave and show you how I defrost them. Okay, so I'm gonna take my bananas. Thank you, Erica, AJ, and Haley for giving me these cute little gnome guys last year. Aren't they so cute? Ah! Yes, yes they are. They love us and we love them, don't we, dear? Yep. There are traveling buds all over the country. <laughs> okay. Now, here's how you test. Okay, not quite defrosted yet, almost. So we're gonna do probably 20 more seconds. Oh, I said 20 seconds. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, sorry. Ah, perfect. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to talk about flambéed flambé bananas. <laughs> okay, so how you can tell when your bananas are done is see how it's smushy all the way through. There we go. Okay, so now, right here, look at this. This is the coolest thing ever. Just peel it just like so. Whoops. And voila. Now, another way you can do it is you can take the end off like that and you can just squish it out. Whoops. Okay, well, I think I got it a little too defrosted. When it's semi defrosted, see how that just squishes out? It'll just squish out, but that's okay. And I forgot to measure my bananas. So now I got to go back and put it all in the measuring cup again because I was. Just getting all into it. Okay. <laughs> so we want one and a half cups of banana. And, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Now I gotta go get another banana. Okay. Would you like your assistant to go get it for you? Uh, no, because I have one right here in this freezer. <laughs> we have more bananas. <laughs> we have bananas all over the place now. Okay, so here we go. All right, this one I'm not gonna throw in the measuring cup. How many seconds now? <laughs> About 40. Uh, you love me anyway, don't you? Yep. In spite of myself? Yep. Whew. That's true dedication. <laughs> but I have nice fingernails, dear, <laughs> right? Ooh, yes you do. <laughs> I was rather impressed with myself. <laughs> Saved myself $198. Wow, I'm impressed too. Well, that's with the original and then a fill after that, but I have enough to do the fill too, so. Okay, here we go. Okay. Z Ooh, perfect. That's 47 seconds. Off. 47 seconds. <laughs> okay. See if this one will squish out. There, now it's squishing. There we go. Okay, so now we have exactly one and a half cups of banana. All right, pouring our banana in our measuring cup. Then we are going to take two and three quarters cups. So there's half, one cup, one and a half cups, two cups, and a half, and three quarters. Okay? So that's a half cup measuring cup? Yes, half cup measuring cup. And then my cinnamon, oops, it's empty. Let's see, here's my other cinnamon. Two tablespoons, oops, and a little bit more. <laughs> okay, got the cinnamon. Now, get more here. Oops, missed my cup. Okay, ready? Yep. And my sugar, right there. 
See, I just leave my sugar and my flour, I just leave the measuring cups in there and then I'm not washing them. All right, and now we're gonna mix this all up. Now it's gonna be like a biscuit dough. Now we're just going to knead this until all that flour is incorporated. Oh my goodness, this smells so delicious. Wow. And the banana is all mixed in. Okay, now this is going to be very sticky. This is how you want it. You want it very sticky, okay? Okay, you want it really, really sticky, just like that. But see how it's kind of formed a dough ball? Okay, now we're gonna go wash our hands. And look at all this beautiful fall. We got a freeze last night, so my flowers are dead, but I still have my fake flowers <laughs> to enjoy. Then the next thing you want to do is rinse out your measuring cup. Then the next thing you want to do is rinse out your measuring cup. Okay, and then dry your measuring cup because you're going to melt some butter in here, okay? So then we're going to take quarter of a stick of butter or margarine, whichever you want. Now, you don't have to do this extra step because we're, we're taking our dough balls and we're going to roll them in uh, butter and that'll grease, but I like to extra grease my pan for recipes like this when they're really sticky so they don't uh, get really stuck. Now, this pan is about probably 60 years old. It was mom's and then she gave it to me. So it's a family moment, mem, memento, mento? <laughs> heirloom. Family heirloom. <laughs> it's a family heirloom. Okay, so we got the family heirloom here. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is So this is the perfect time for me to show you guys, look at these cute little containers I got for a quarter each at the thrift store. Now this one here is, this one I paid a dollar for, but isn't that cute? Wow. Okay, so I'm going to use my little corningware. I haven't got to use these yet. They're vintage. Wow. Very nice. I'm, I'm vintage now. <laughs> wow, that really hits, hits you in the gut when you realize you're vintage. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to spray our hands with cooking spray so that our hands aren't all gooby. Now, you can just form your balls, but I like my little ice cream scoop because it just works easier. And spray your ice cream scoop, which I forgot. Okay. And then we're going to roll a little ball. Put it in butter. Oops. <laughs> oh, man. I did all. Okay. So in the middle of all this, my son was calling, and we were having a big to-do, and I forgot to show you what I was doing. Okay. So I've got my, <laughs> got my um, sugar, and yes, I'm going to go wash all this when I'm done, and my cinnamon in here. Sorry. It's like chaos and bedlam around here. We got kids running in. My mom's running in. Okay, so then we're going to mix all this. Oh, yum. That looks so good. Okay, then we're going to take our little dough balls. I dipped it in the butter already, and then we're just going to dip it in our cinnamon and sugar, just like so, and we're going to place it in our pan. Okay. You want them roughly the same. But if they're not exactly the same, don't freak out. It's perfectly fine.
Do they still make little corningware containers like that? I don't know, but if they do, I will link them in the description below. I bet they do. If you want more recipes on using baking mix, you can go to livingonadime.com to get this recipe and several others. Also, our Dining on a Dime cookbook, volume one, has our baking, our homemade baking mix recipe and several different recipes on how to use your homemade baking mix. Baking mix is just so easy. I mean, all it is is flour, salt, baking powder, or baking soda, depending on which kind you're using. And a little bit of shortening. That's all it is. Oh, yum. Okay, I'm gonna arrange them just a little bit closer. Get these last three in. Okay, now that we're gonna throw this in a 350 degree oven. delicious. Oops, I dropped a piece of sugar on there. That's all right. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Okay, <laughs> let's see what this recipe tastes like. I've never made this before. <laughs> Do I tell you now? Hmm, <gasps> smells good. I just got to use up all these bananas. Hmm. Is it good? It is good. Very banana-y. But the cinnamon and the banana together is amazing. Mm -hmm. So if it's really banana-y, maybe we could have added an extra half cup of baking mix and it would have been okay? No, I kind of like it like this. You like it banana-y? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gluten-free, but what I do is I just taste it and spit it out. So we're going to see what I think. Let's see. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's really good. I feel like a. Hold on. It's like a banana bread muffin biscuit yeah. sort of thingy. I like how it turned out kind of crunchy on the outside. Yeah, it's really good with the crunchy on the outside, the soft on the inside. This one's a keeper. Cleaning microwaves that Pistol, our favorite appliance repairman, said in our videos on our other channel, Living on a Dime. He said, never, ever, ever use window cleaner on your appliances. The ammonia in window cleaner ruins the finish on your panels and it makes it separate and then your panels don't work. And then you keep Pistol in business. So Pistol appreciates you using window cleaner. But if you want to keep your microwaves and your ovens, panel here on your oven or if you have a refrigerator that has the panel on it do not use ammonia based window cleaners guys it's ruining your appliances things that make you go hmm. he said that's the number one thing that they're called for really yeah and don't let your house cleaners do it either if you have a house cleaner michael my <laughs> wonderful house cleaner <laughs> kitchen cleaner you're my kitchen cleaner yep you vacuum and you do the kitchen, and that's just wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> I'll do the toilet if you do all that stuff. Thank you. <laughs> our easy pull apart bread or monkey bread. This recipe is in our Dining on a Dime Volume 2, and this is an adaptation of the easy pull apart bread on page 112. Now, the recipe in the book calls for a bunt pan, but I know that everybody doesn't always have a bunt pan, so I'm going to show you how I make it. Take a loaf pan, spray the loaf pan with cooking spray then in a zip top bag i'm going to put my sugar and my brown sugar and if you guys don't know how to soften hard, hard brown sugar i have a video that we did several years back on how to soften brown sugar it's super easy so i got my sugar my brown sugar and then my cinnamon. Now, I leave these in the zip top bag because then whenever it's time to make pull apart bread, I just reuse the cinnamon and sugar and just keep adding to it as I reuse the cinnamon and sugar. Okay, so we've got our cinnamon and sugar sugars mixed in there. Next, we're going to microwave our butter. Then you want to cut it in quarters 
with either a knife or this little scraper works really well. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a well-greased pan, you're going to take melted butter and dip your pieces in there, and then you're going to put them in the cinnamon and sugar until they're well coated. Shake them around and then you're just going to put them in your pan. Just stack them around. You want about two layers, just like so. If you missed a little bit of cinnamon sugar, just sprinkle it on there. Then you're going to take your leftover butter, you're going to pour it all over the top. And if you want, you can sprinkle a little bit more cinnamon sugar. Then I just store this in the refrigerator. And then the next time I use it, I just add a little bit more cinnamon sugar. And I just do that three or four times and then I throw it away. All right, now we're going to bake this at 350 degrees. Okay, so this is how you tell when they're done. See how it's kind of jiggly? That's not done in the middle. So we need to go about another five or ten minutes. So I'm going to turn it around so it gets brown on the other side because most ovens don't cook evenly. Okay. Okay, if your top gets a little brown, but it's not quite done yet, just take a piece of foil and set it over the top and put it in there, and that will keep the top from browning. Now, I have one of these instant read thermometers, and I love these for baking because I can always tell for sure my baked goods are done. If your bread is 200 degrees, well, 190 to 200 degrees, then you know the inside of your bread is done. Mine definitely reached that. And there you have perfect monkey bread. But here's a little tip, guys. I got these deli papers for free at a restaurant going out of business. And it was a yard sale for them. And I just put one on top of my butter or margarine, but you could also use just a little napkin that keeps it from exploding all over your microwave. Recipe that broke the internet. This is my mom's recipe in our Dining on a Dime cookbook. Page 91, volume two of our Dining on a Dime cookbook, page 91. Yes, I saw this recipe going all over the internet and I was like, that's mom's sticky buns. That's what it's been. All right. So actually, instead of dirtying a measuring cup, I am going to just use this one, the regular one. All right, so we've got our whipping cream. Now, mom's recipe, I am cutting into quarters. So there's the whipping cream right there. Oh my goodness, that is delicious. And I just lied because I forgot I have to melt my butter or margarine, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to put in my butter right here and melt it in the microwave. Okay, I've got my butter or margarine melted in the microwave. And now I'm going to add my brown sugar. So that was three tablespoons of butter or margarine. And I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. Now, if you want, you can add nuts into this. You could put raisins would be really good. Um, but we're just going to make it, my boys just like it plain. So we're just going to get this all mixed around just like this. Now, mom's recipe also calls for making homemade bread. Now, you can use cinnamon rolls that I'm using today. So I'm using these canned cinnamon rolls. You could use freezer cinnamon rolls. Um, and you can make your own. It doesn't really matter, but I'm using the can today. Woo, it fell apart. It's okay. 
that's kind of part of the fun is rolling it back up, isn't it? Okay, so we got one. I think these are eight. Now we're gonna put this in a 400 degree oven for 13 to 17 minutes. Look at that bubbly, delicious goodness. Okay, we're gonna let this cool down for just about five minutes and then we're gonna tip it over. Okay, it has been about five minutes. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cake plate upside down. <laughs> and I hope I can do this. Now you can just scoop them out if you want, but I don't know why I'm, I don't know why I'm getting all fancy. Okay, there. And it's still warm. do that very gracefully. Scoot it over. Oh my goodness. Guys, if you are liking these videos, would you please give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe? Doesn't that look delicious? The recipe is in the description below. Okay, try a bite. Yum. Yum. Mmm. Man, that is amazingly good. Okay, that's your mother-in-law's recipe. That's really good. Yay. How many can I have? 10 out of 10. Yep, it's delicious. I keep my baking mix in a canister. Isn't this cute? It was only $2 at the thrift store. I just thought that was too darn tootin' cute to pass up. Put my baking mix in a canister. Why? Because then it's way easier to measure out. So I pour my baking mix in there if I'm buying it. And then I just keep a half cup or one cup measure scoop in there. Then I don't have to dirty another measuring scoop. To make these three ingredient donuts, you can use either big biscuits or little biscuits. If you use the big biscuits, divide them in half. Then. You can either use a biscuit cutter or your finger to make a nice hole in your donut. To test if your oil is hot enough, stick the end of your donut in. If it does not bubble, it's not hot enough yet. See how it's bubbling? That is ready to cut them over. Drain them on a paper plate or a plate with a paper towel to catch the grease. I filled a paper bag with powdered sugar right there. Then after, put them in the paper bag, shake them so they're well coated with powdered sugar, and serve. This recipe is in our Dining on a Dime cookbook and on our website at livingonadime.com. Yummy goodness. Oh my. Oh my. That is the perfect biscuit. This recipe uses self-rising flour that already has the baking powder and salt in it. If you do not have self-rising flour, all you have to do is add your salt and baking powder, not soda. This is how you measure baking powder. You put it in there, scrape it along the side, just like so. 
Then whisk your self-rising flour or your flour and your salt and your baking powder together to get it nice and fluffy. Then we're going to measure our shortening and here's an easy trick for measuring shortening. I need one quarter cup of shortening. So I have filled my two cup measure to one and three quarters cups with water. Now remember, water and oil don't mix. So I'm putting my shortening in until it rises. Can you see right there the two? And that will be a quarter cup of shortening. If you need a half a cup of shortening, just put one and a half cups of water in. Right there we go. Then you're going to take your shortening out of your water, let it drain, and put it in your flour. Next, you're going to measure out your three quarters cups of milk, just regular whole milk. Then you're going to take your fingers and you're going to mix the shortening into the flour. You don't need knives, you don't need a pastry blender, just quickly and gently get that shortening mixed in with the flour until you get nice little pea-sized clumps. See it's pea-sized and smaller, that's absolutely perfect. Then we're going to pour in our milk and stir it around. Now you want this to be a fairly sticky dough. You don't want it too dry. If it's too dry, add one to two tablespoons of milk until you get it to a nice consistency. If it's too sticky, then just add a little extra flour. You're going to put this on your floured board or floured counter and you're going to knead it just until it's nice and smooth. See how nice and smooth that is? Then you can use a rolling pin, but why dirty something that you don't need to dirty? Then you're going to press it out. You're going to take your biscuit cutter and push straight down and lift up. Look at that. That is absolutely perfect right there. Don't twist or turn. You want to just straight down and lift. If you don't have a biscuit cutter, don't worry. Just pick off a piece of dough and just bring it together. Mine was a little falling apart there. Bring it together until you have a nice little biscuit like that. Okay? And then you can just make it with your hands. You don't even need a biscuit cutter. Okay, and there's our dog biscuit as they call it. Now, if you have a dark pan, you will need to turn your heat down 25 degrees, but I am using my stainless steel cookie sheet here lined with parchment paper, but if you're, if you're using a non-stick pan, make sure you turn it down 25 degrees, okay? Then you want to put your biscuits, for nice fluffy biscuits, put them so that they're touching, and when they're touching, they help each other rise and get all nice and beautiful. We're going to put this in a 500 degree oven. Yes, I said 500 degrees, that was not a mistake. For 10 to 12 minutes until golden brown. Yummy biscuits, you wanna hold on to your parchment so they don't slide. But look at this. Look at that yummy goodness. Oh my, oh my, that is the perfect biscuit. There you go. Oh, isn't that delicious? Okay, we're going to put a nice blop of butter. Wow. I know my boys are going to devour these in five minutes. This recipe is in the description below. Please visit us at Living on a Dime. 
This is the most darn too cool kitchen gadget ever invented. I absolutely love this thing and I for 20 years have used this thing. Watch the bread clean up. You just go like that. Look, it just gathers it all together just like so. And it gets all that bread dough off and look, look at this. Is that not beautiful? Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. The nice thing about it is it holds a, a large amount, so then you can just dump it in the trash. The other nice thing about this is I'll demonstrate in another video, but you can use it to cut like your biscuit dough into squares, and then you use every little single bit of biscuit dough. Okay, I can making some garlic pull apart bread. Now, what I'm gonna do is margarine is cheaper right now, so I'm gonna take a little bit of margarine and put it in my pan. I would say probably a half a stick if you have a stick of margarine or butter. Then I'm gonna put this pan in my oven and let all the margarine melt. All right, while the margarine is melting, I have these jumbo biscuits. My family loves these. Woo! And, and then what I'm going to do is Take my handy dandy little cutter and just, oops, cut these in quarters, just like so. almost all melted mm. I'll give it just a minute more okay call that done now the reason why I did it in the oven is because I already had my chicken in there roasting so you can do it in the microwave if you want all right and there we go and I'm going to take my garlic I don't know half a teaspoon or so and mix that around. Then we're just gonna take our pieces of biscuit and just get it all wrapped around there. Yum. All right, now we're gonna put this back in the oven, 400 degrees. Okay, and there is our garlic biscuits. Oh my goodness, it smells so delicious. Yum. Wait, did you just sneak, did you just sneak a bun? Ha, 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 ha.